Nice fish on. Oh, uh, that looks like a snook. Nice work, Jojo. Yeah, Is buddy. that a snook? Yeah. Snook time Ooh. on a cloudy, nasty day. Woo, baby. What's up, everybody? It's Joe Simons. Look, Diamonds. Luke Simon Slam Shady Strikes again. Nice little snook. We've got a trout, two snook now, and what, jacks? Jacks, lady fish. It's a fish. tough day here. Yeah, looking for a red now to complete the slam. But yeah, this is a, a big front just came in. This is uh, April and a, hopefully the last cold front of the year. There we go. Little guy, but hey, Cody, we'll take it. Oh, slam shady's popping out there. Get him back in the water. Yeah, so we're doing this one because you can see I got my jacket on and you can see just look at the clouds here around us. It was raining. We actually had to go back inside because we're complete pansies, uh, but it did look pretty gnarly out. And we almost debated just like staying inside and catching up on emails and stuff, but man, I already driven over from Winter Haven and Cody was here, boat was ready, and you know what? Some days it's like this, right? We don't get to pick your day. It's got to go when so you, you got to make the best out of it. So let's talk about the type of area we're, uh, we're fishing for those who are listening. You can't kind of see this beautiful mangrove line. And uh, you can see right here, Cody, if you look to the left, some oysters. Right over here, some oysters, some pretty clear water. So we're only in a, what, a foot and a half, two feet of water right here. Yep. Yeah, and we're just, just trying to get out of the wind. Artificial lures. Literally just trying to get out of the wind. Um, <laughs> and we're not doing a good job, because we're now we're casting into it. Yeah, because the wind, this is nothing right here. The, the wind, it's a, it's a forecast to be over 20, um, and it's got to be there right now. It's cranking, the white caps are really big up in the in this bay, which isn't even that big of a bay, but um, we're just up here against this shoreline, We've got some, some mullet jumping, which is a good sign. We've got mangroves, we've got oysters, and, uh, and we have slam shadies on and just punching in the wind right now and covering ground. And we've got owner twist lock hooks. Both of us have one eighth, right? Yeah, you got? three out size hook with one eighth uh, weight. Um, Great for the shallow water. Yeah, you rig it weedless. Have to have it just for being weedless with all we have. We've got oysters around, we've got a bunch of grass. So um, if we didn't have a weedless setup, we'd just be just be fighting off snags all day long. And the first snook that I caught with, uh, that before we were filming was skipping underneath the mangrove line. That's just another reason to have these hooks on you. Doesn't mean you're always gonna use them. We use a lot of jig heads. But when you have that opportunity where you see that, you even called it out the second we pulled up to that area. And I've never even fished a spot before. You're like, man, look at that overhang there, those mangroves. And to be able to skip underneath there without getting hung up, Price, and really it's priceless when you get a strike right off the bat. Um, yeah, this is, this is tough going. Comment down below if you think 2021 might be the windiest start to any year for fishing ever. It's been crazy. That's been a lot of wind. And we got you know some friends who are big into offshore fish and they're like, man, we haven't even gone out the boat because every weekend we had open, it, at least with inshore fishing, another reason we love it so much, because we used to be in offshore fishing. Our dad was, uh, really kind of moving that way and like he had probably a year just like this you know summer of 86 and he said you know what i'm sick and tired of it and our 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 friend ouija bentley was getting into flats fishing down in marco island and our dad got on the back of that and back then i mean now every day you know you see a flats boat it's just you know skiffs are just kind of natural i mean back in the 80s i mean it, not that many people had polling platforms in like you know the tampa area they're always down in the keys but it wasn't that it wasn't that common to see like legit polling platform skiffs in flats boats like we see them today. And our dad finally said, "You know what? I'm done with this offshore stuff. I'm going to start uh, doing inshore fishing." And sold the the offshore boat we had with outriggers and all that. And and uh, we haven't really looked back since. I still enjoy offshore fishing occasionally, but man, this is probably one of the worst years ever for it. Not because the fish aren't biting. Just sucks getting out there. Yep. Wind's blowing. We've had just so many. We, this is like our third podcast of the year already on how to fish 20 mile an hour days. <laughs> and, oh, yeah, ooh, yeah, it's been brutal. You see that? That's a needle fish. Oh, it's a needle fish? <laughs> Dang. Yep. Slam can tracks again. It, everything, everything eats it. Yep. Yeah, it's definitely been windy. And um, yeah, with the whole inshore fishing too, like we were, you know, we'd go offshore and catch a lot of sea bass and stuff. Right, like going off Daytona, grew up doing that. and. Uh, I always thought that the further out you go, the bigger the fish are. 
And so I, I didn't really, I wasn't even that interested. I, I did a lot of bass fishing and for me, saltwater is all about getting far out there and, and there you can catch the big fish. But yeah. in, in reality, I mean, there's some, some of these inshore fish will fight just as bit as hard, if not harder than a lot of offshore. Obviously when you we've add tarp in the mix, then that's a whole different ball game. But even snook, redfish, when you get them over 40 inches, that's a proper yeah. fight. Like that's um, no need to go offshore for some big fish is, the, is what I eventually learned. Yep. Earlier yeah. too, uh, just kind of a cool tip. So Luke made a cast, and what what did you put your rod down for? You stopped for something. I don't even remember what it was. I was messing the troll motor. I was messing the troll motor. And guess what? He got the hit on on basically on the drop and letting it sink. And so uh, you made the good point. Uh, hey, this might be a good time to slow it down. Anytime that you see that happening, and maybe even just purposely make a stop instead of your normal retrieve. Try try something a little bit different. And guess what? That snook, whoa, caught in, the, caught in the trees. That snook that I just caught, that was from slowing it down a little. Man, everything loves that slam shady. Mangroves do. Come on. There you go. Jeez Louise. It's the beauty of these podcasts, guys. They're live. You get to see everything. Good, the bad, and the, the ugly. Tree. We always say, even if you're fishing with us, you don't get caught in a tree every once in a while. You're not casting aggressively enough. If you, do key, 15, if you do it 15 times, Joe, you get thrown over. The key is you just have to catch more fish than mangroves. Exactly. So that's, that's, the, that's the yeah. There is the barometer. You can't use that excuse forever. Hey, you guys told me I wouldn't be an aggressive enough. Just when I said that, I'm about to get stuck in this tree. Oh, boy. It's embarrassing. Oh, got out. That's embarrassing. Yeah, if you guys haven't seen this underwater stuff where Luke is taking a pretty big camera. Ooh, did you see that? Ooh, that was a better fish there. Dang, it looked that like a little snook. That might've been a redfish. I thought it was a snook, but either way, something just came up and hammered me. But he's taken you know, a pretty big, it's not like one of these hidden cameras you can barely see. I mean, it's, it's a monster. And uh, catching trout after trout and big trout. I mean, there's some 24 inchers on there using the Slam Shady and I, I don't know what to tell you guys. If you're not using it yet, I, I, I mean, you're missing out. It, it is, there is nothing we've ever found out there like that. Yeah, I've, oh, been, I've, been, I've been testing this underwater, this underwater videography Sorry. stuff for a while. And uh, yeah, obviously testing on a bunch of different lures. And this is definitely the one that has proven to get the best results, like even with a camera mounted right in front of it. So uh, it just, it's just easy. It's just so, easy to use. So simple to use. My daughter, my little nine-year-old daughter can use it. Everybody can use it. It's just like, hey, make a cast, do a straight retrieve. Obviously, there's some advanced stuff you could do. There's some advanced rigging, and we provide all that. It's you know part of the membership. Even if you just get one pack, we'll still we just want to help people out. Uh, end of the day, though, we want people to join on our club. That's where all the magic happens. It's where it's it's fun for us to interact. The community now is just exploding. Oh, oh man, I just oh had you're something. going out there, huh? Dang where where were you? Good brother, don't always you worry about right that. behind. Don't you worry about that. I need to stop using my yellow line so you can't see where it is. You need to stop saying something. Oh, on the bottom. That's what I say, on the bottom. Oh, on the bottom. Oh, but anyhow, man. that Slam Shady works so well. And uh, we're playing around with a couple of new colors as well. Even though we probably don't have to, I, I know fishermen are, including yours truly, which is why we're doing it. And um, we are going to play around some colors. I know there's some people in Texas and other states that say, hey, you should get something a little darker. And we've heard people say, uh, I've had really good luck on uh, uh, kind of a, a black looking lure. And I know even that at one point, a black, what was it? The black um, Johnson Sprite Spoon. Spoon was like deadly. Johnson Silver Minnow. I, I, don't know, uh, I don't know if they stopped making them or what happened. So we're playing around with that. And so far, it's working pretty good. I saw one on Amazon. You did? Yeah. Did you buy it? No. Huh. No. Well, but, but yeah, as far as those other colors, we're not going to, obviously, we're going to test them. We're not just going to make them and put them on the side. We're going to, we, we have some now. We're going to start testing them, and, and we're only going to take them live if they prove to work. Yeah, we test everything. Yeah. Looks like a little creek mouth right here. Ooh. Ooh, it kind that, of deserves a strike. Can we zoom in be, on that? That little creek mouth there? That could be, uh, that should be snook spot there. See if old Joe Joe can. Whoa! Whoa! No. Oh, 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 almost. That was actually almost a good cast. Yep. It still ended up well. We'll get Let's one more shot up in there. It is so clear back here. Oh, oh ricocheted off. Me. 
It's tough. We're literally casting right into the wind. Probably hear it on our mics. It uh, makes it a little bit tougher to cast, especially on these little twist lock hooks, but we'd be getting it done. We'd yeah, be so getting now it done. we are finally, this is the spot I was really aiming to go to where it's just totally out of the wind. If, if there were fish up here, this water's clear enough where we could actually be sight fishing. And this is, there's, it's kind of rare where you can sight fish and, you know, when it's, cr when wind's cranking, but. Oh, there we go. If you, uh, there we go. There we go. Oh, double. Double up. <laughs> double trouble, mine baby. Mine might be a red. Mine's, uh, mine was out in the open flat. I think mine's a snooky. But, um, but yeah, it's, so it's really about if, if the, even if the wind's cranking, yeah, I got a red. So this is nice. Gonna, this is going to complete the slam. So even slam when the wind's cranking. Slam on a tough day. Not a biggest snook, but it still the, give me a little bit of fight. When the wind's cranking, just, just got to choose your spot accordingly. Right? This is a spot I generally don't fish very much. Um, I have been here a couple times, and this is the best I've okay. done. <laughs> But it really just came here just because of the type, it was the type of spot based on the conditions. That's what we preach over and over and over again. It's not about the specific spot. It's all about matching the spot to the conditions. So let me go ahead and get this red. This is a nice little, uh, what you got there, dude? I'm going to get a little uh, double double pick real quick. Might as well. Got mine up. Let's hurry up and get yours. All right, Jay. We get Cody in uh, the on, quick pick. Buddy. Luke can hurry up and get his. Come on there, buddy. Tell me if you're ready, because I need to dip mine back in. All right. There we go. That's a oh, beautiful red. Slam Shady strikes again. So they're not, not huge, but this we'll is we'll take them. sloppy weather, and, uh, and we will take it. Look yeah. at that blue tail in there. That's awesome. awesome. Let me get him back in quick. Woo. Still got some energy in him. Let me get a quick little pick of that, Luke. We'll put this on the fishing report for insider right, members. Better make it fast. Oh, uh, too late. We're, too late. Let, we're letting him getting go. back in. Doggone face recognition, you know? Doesn't recognize gotta, me with You gotta all be these, ready for those pictures. All these buffs and stuff on. But yeah, oh, this well. is just, uh, again, just case in point where it's not all about picking the perfect weather, perfect day. Just go when you can go and, and just plan accordingly. And uh, that was a nice, <laughs> nice little double. Yeah. I was not expecting that. Even like the strike score was really low today. I think it was like a five or something. If you guys don't know about the strike score, so we've we've had it open. That's smartfishingtides.com. And we've had it open to the public for a while. A lot of it was just to get some more feedback from a lot of people. And um, I'll be honest with you, it got really expensive really fast, you know, because we're getting real time data like every five to 10, 15 minutes from NOAA and a few other places and even the Google API and there's Navionic. I mean, there's all this stuff on yeah, there. The, the radar, the map radar. Is... Golly. So all of a sudden we get a bill one month for just all these APIs. I mean, it was thousands of dollars. Um, and, it, you know, it's a completely free free site for the public. And obviously that number, the thousand, whatever, four or five thousand, whatever it was, it's based on total amounts of users. So what we are going to be doing most likely here very soon is we are going to make it private just for insider members only one more reason to join us in the club not only can you save money on all your tackle rods reels line lures etc but we go out on the water we show exactly where we're fishing where we launched why we picked that spot why fish were in certain areas at certain times based on real trends and we do this in texas do it in florida and the beauty of it all these trends are working everywhere and then we have the community and now of course we're going to have the smart fishing tides and a few little things will be uh, potentially adding on to that as well which we can't share yet here uh, publicly but i'm pumped and uh you guys listen to the podcast on the tackle industry uh that's just been one of the toughest parts uh, of of kind of this trifecta of what we're doing tackle on the water premium content and then the community but it's slowly like it's not back to normal and it won't be for a long time but it's slowly getting better we're starting to get some orders in got some tfo rods by the time you listen to this it might even be sold out because this stuff goes so fast we got some fuegos finally coming in we put a mondo yeah, the biggest order we've ever put in for mondo any, order any of fuegos possibly the biggest order dia was ever seen I mean, we're for that one skew. We're I'm willing to bet we're doing more than Bass Pro for that specific time nationwide. Probably uh, it's a, a crazy. significant amount. And same with I mean, Z-Man told us that you know they're licensing Slam Shady from us. 
So we have the 2.0 in the bomber. That's obviously just for Salt Strong. And um, the, the Z-Man version, obviously you can buy now anywhere in the world. And that's the top selling color in the Minnow Z in the world right now. It's beating every single thing uh, that's out there. It just flat which, out uh, works. Which is pretty cool. Exactly, because it flat out works. Um, man, it's, I just, I keep going back to it. And I, I want other stuff to work, right? And a lot of people ask, hey, I want you, like, we're trying stuff all the time. Earlier today, we were trying some other lures and it, man, I don't know what it is. Just keep going back to that slam shady. Sucker works. So uh, what's the tide doing right now? We even talked about that. It is not doing much. This was really, <laughs> it was really not a good wind, day. Wind driven. It's, it's, um, it's slow, we have a slow incoming right now but it's, it's just, it's very minimal. Like when, when we were going under a bridge, I mean, the, there, was, there was basically, it's a bridge that in many cases, the current's cranking through and it was barely, barely moving. Yeah, it makes it tough. I'm dying to get a little sight fishing shot in. This water is, is abnormally Beautiful. clear. Cody, can you see that? Over there on the left, just how clear this is. I can't tell if that's a fish there or not. I'm gonna make it catch oh, that. Oh, where, where? No, where? Don't, Show you. Me where? don't Show me you where? worry about it. Let's see if Luke messes it up and Ooh, beautiful cast. Yes, yes. If that's a fish, I, we've got a good chance of getting them. I oh, that one right there? Yeah, I don't think it's a fish. Nope. Oh. Ah, what a bummer. Deep down, I wanted you to catch it, man. <laughs> Make us both look better. I'm coming out here like, I thought you guys caught fish every single cast. Well, some days we do. Not today. We haven't had one of those trout days in a while where it's like every cast where you find that. Yeah. That's cool. So let's talk about, uh, I, I know I've seen some, some insider reports. Is that something chasing you? Yeah, so that's a needle fish. There's an oyster bar right there. Uh, of a lot of people looking for, for wade fishing spots. Uh, it, it comes up a lot. It's something that I personally love to do. And uh, man, look at all that bait. I was just down in Placida, Florida. If you guys don't know where that is, it's Port Charlotte area. Uh, near Punta Gorda and had just a killer three days in a row. It wasn't just like a fluke, pun intended, of, uh, of one day. It was three days in a row of all just wade fishing. And I just went underneath some of the little bridges, bridges and causeways. And I mean, the one key in 100% of my catches was moving water. And in particular, I was fishing a, a bridge that we had an outgoing tide. So all this water is flooding out. And so I was getting, so the water's going out this way, bridges, let's just say this fishing rod, this cork. And so I'm here casting up underneath the bridge and retrieving back. And I was using both the Slam Shady and the Power Prawn. Both did really, really well. And it was really interesting. Um, right underneath the bridge, like right where the shadow line uh, is, is where all the big snook were. And I caught a couple snook, lost a couple as well. And then it was really interesting right behind it, it was almost like the snook were getting first dibs at all the shrimp and the bait that was going under, under, getting pushed out from this outgoing tide. And then right behind it were a ton of trout and even mangrove snapper. And uh, it was just fascinating. And, and I was having trouble catching the snook because they get a little bit picky. They start realizing when one of their buddies gets hooked, uh, so I just started casting kind of back behind the bridge where I was still going with the current, but not like I was with the snook. And I was just catching tons of trout and tons of mangrove snapper all right there. It was almost like they were getting the leftovers from the snook. That was really, really fascinating. But for those of you who are looking to wade fish, especially if you're on vacation, spring break, whatever it might be, is that a, oh, I thought that was a redfish telling, it's just a bunch of mullet. Try those causeways, try the bridges, and even at night. I mean, the, the best night I had was when my wife and kids, we'd been out in the boat all day and the sandbar, they were so worn out. And I went out there just by myself uh, from like 10, uh, 10 at night until midnight. I finally just got tired of catching fish and I had just an absolute blast. Uh, there were two other dudes, two young guys that came out uh, on the bridge and they had some shrimp and did, did well also. That's just such an easy way to do it. It's usually not too packed. Um, if you are fishing the causeways, like I know a lot of people will go down to, uh, you know, clear water in terms of the Gulf side here. It's a popular place for spring break and for vacations. I mean, that, there's multiple causeways there. Honeymoon Island is an amazing place. You can walk all the way down. I would say start early. Don't you agree, Luke? 
yeah. or, or late. I mean, because at some yeah. point, a lot of these places, they get a lot of people. Even that causeway there in Dunedin, it's an amazing place to fish. It can be brutal, though, by, you know, 12, by, by high noon, and it's just hot. Uh, but there's just so many people out there, you know, partying and hanging out. So go super early or super late, depending on the tide. If the water's not moving, you don't have a chance. It is gonna be really, really, really slow. Um, ask me how I know. As much yeah. as we wanna think, oh yeah, I got the right bait, and no, if the water's not moving in places like that when you're wade fishing and fishing bridges, it, it's gonna be really, really, really tough. Yeah, and really at the nighttime is, uh, did you catch any fish there during the day? I didn't try, it yeah, was all, it was all yeah, night, night. Because that was when the outgoing fishes. tide was all, all three nights. Because I, because those the the bridge fish they get to get targeted a lot, right? They're um, they they do fish aren't the smartest, but they do wisen up when they keep getting getting yanked out of the water over and over again. Oh, and, uh, oh nice! Oh my that? goodness, dude! What was that? Yeah, big red. That nailed me right when I was up at the boat. That was crazy. I was I was hanging out with all that bait fish thing. I, I made about ten casts through there. Well, I figured there'd be something in there. Hmm. Didn't have that magic touch. I, you know what I got on mine? Dr. Juice. <laughs> Telling you that juice is loose. But yeah, just super important to just keep that in mind for wade fishing, really for just shore fishing alone. I generally, if I'm doing it during the day, I'm wade fishing or I'm, I'm getting some, some you know, wading boots on and, uh, and I'm getting away from the places that get fished all the time. Because if you're fishing from the bridge in the, middle, bridge in the middle of the day, those fish get targeted a lot. If you put on some boots and even walk just 100 yards away, that can totally change where the fish are, are a lot less spooky. Ooh. They'll, they'll eat artificials willingly. You can you edit that one out good? <laughs> horrible cast. I, I do want you to look guys. over here. Can you see all this bait on top of the water? Can you see all that, Cody? I mean, so guess what we saw, right? When we pulled up, birds. Now you see, I mean, you could actually hear, maybe you can hear the bait if you're listening to this. There's bait everywhere. A lot of it's mullet. And uh, man, it's two of the bees. And obviously, you know, now we know there's some fish, but you got some boils and those are the three bees. Maximize them. So we, we tried an area early trying to fish some docks. There's one area that was completely out of the wind. So that part was nice, but there's no bait, no birds, no boils. I mean, look at all that bait. So you know there's some fish around here. And I just had that I'm assuming a redfish come up and pop me right that next was to big, the boat. That was a big boil. Yeah, it was, it was taking out line right away too. Um, but I wasn't ready to set the hook. Man, do you see that? There is a lot of bait over there. I don't know where to go to go catch mullet now. Seriously. You don't need any blackout chum for all that. Just throw the net. Run that dog. You see all that bait code? You know, someone's gonna get mad at me saying, let Cody talk. He's not mic'd up. Hit that one comment. Stop talking over Cody. You don't ever let him answer. He's shaking his head. What camera's shaking? That was pretty funny. Whoop! Dang. They're getting antsy. So yeah, a lot of good bait. This area looks awesome. And at least casting out that way, we can go with the wind. Yeah, we're about to go in some yeah, fun about layer. To. <laughs> we're about to get wind blasted here in a second. Uh, so, Luke, talk about some other good spots, because that's really what it's all about, right? Is you know, we know we got the slam shady. That's going to work when we find the fish. At the end of the day, you got to be in a in a feeding zone. What other kind of spots can you fish when it's this this windy and overcast? Well, I mean, not many, right? That's why like we pretty much have to sit right here for a while. Well, I'm, I'm not talking about this spot exactly, but I'm, I'm trying to get out of you. Uh, is it, yeah, you good. know, coves? You try to go behind like super high two and three story homes, these big monster homes. Yeah, it's get out of the wind. So any, anything that blocks wind. Huh. So whether it's anything trees. Was, anything you need to keep cold, Tommy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we keep all kinds of things in this fridge. Beers, coves. Six pack of beer. Uh. <laughs> anything yeah, you so, want to keep uh, cold. Yeah, so we started, the first spot was uh, we were dock fishing, right? Because this, this is actually a cold front coming in as well. This is uh, hopefully, hopefully the last one of the year I mentioned earlier. And Let's get this bag up too. And uh, yeah, good call. Yeah, see trash in the water? Pick it up. Yeah. It's not gonna, it's not gonna get out by itself. Nope. But uh, yeah, just look, just get out of the wind. Because um, once we get 
even this little area is still pretty protected, but you can see those flags up there. Those, those things are charged up. It is cranking. And so, yeah, there. I wonder if we're having any luck. So, All right, Luke saved the day. That's the good deed. See, Slam Shady's even catch trash. Does also, a good deed. Also means some good karma. Uh, you got the troll motor. You're focus on that slowly bag. moving into the death trap. Yeah, first of all, we did those docks just because the, with a cold front, a lot of the fish will push off the shallows. Um, but apparently, it's just it's just stayed warm enough that that these fish are up up here shallow. Ooh. The, the docks were kind of slow. We caught some junk Ooh. fish. We caught some small trout, jacks, ladyfish, um, and all this seems like this. At least the snook and redfish action have been been up here shallow. Look at that boat getting pushed around by the wind. It is yeah, cranking over there. I still haven't fished this shoreline right here before, so I'm curious we to could. try it out. Wind will push us right down the edge. Yeah, we'll see. But even, Cody, if you look over here, you can see the water. We can just start right there. Now, good news is you don't have to have a troll motor or power pole. Uh, it helps a little bit when the when it's not blowing perfectly for you. But if you missed that other podcast, look at that guy's trying to dock. And uh, it's tough to even, even dock when it's cranking like that. Or maybe they just got caught on Ooh, something. that was something that just struck right there. You sure? Yeah. Ali, did you see that? almost boomerang back to me. <laughs> uh, but anyhow, finding a, a mangrove line, anything that has some structure and protection and just letting the wind blow you down is a great, great way to at least catch some fish. Cody's all over that plastic bag. The last thing you want to do is save the day. Oh, dude, something just spooked oh, out there. That was a mullet. Dang, this wind is just brutal. Yeah, and so a tip for, for wind, for fishing in the wind, obviously try to position so you're not casting into the wind. <laughs> that's that's rule number one. But you can't always do that. Like right now, the, something struck here, up here at this point, and last thing I want to do is go motor all around and then you know, come back with it. So we're just charging right into it. The key for casting is to keep it low. You want to basically get under the wind. Um, the, the, lower, the lower it is, the, the lower the wind level is, and so you need to get to a sidearm and just punch it up in there, right? That, that went, it, it didn't go quite as far as, about, it obviously didn't go nearly as far as if I was casting with the wind, but if I did an overhand cast, like a normal overhand lob cast, it would have it would have probably gone half the distance. So if you just got to punch in the wind, keep it low and, uh, and just line drive it. Let me use my strong hand. Line drive it through there. Let me use, whoa, getting caught up in the microphone. Cord came out. Wind's blowing everything up in here. Oh, they were trying to dock. That's crazy. Yeah. They're just getting blown all over the place. Yeah, this is brutal. Oh, man, you see that? Took a turn for the worst. So, yeah, let's see. Um, so, we fished the calm area. It was okay. I'm sure there's more fish there. I just I just don't think they're feeding all that well. But we picked up a couple. So, now we're going to try this this windy side. And we're going to, it's going to feel nice. We're going to be casting extremely far. We're going to feel like we're a lot stronger. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, much further. Oh, yeah. That bombs away. Now you can go overhand. So we'll see if we can get any action up here. Yeah, let's see if we can get a couple. Uh, so what else we got? What else are we working on? Got some uh, new courses. So Richard, if you guys haven't talked to him, that means you might not be a, a newer member. We hired Richard just to start contacting new members. Now he's reaching out to existing ones as well after he gets done with it, but we've had so many new members join the club. I mean, we're having some where it's, you know, 100 in a, in a day. That's 100 phone calls, which, you know, literally takes all eight hours. But Richard is reaching out to new members every day and welcoming them to the club, you know, making sure you guys got your email and we're even now doing some text to make sure that you get in the community, that you're able to get all your discounts, able to get all the courses, et cetera. And, and then you ask, you know, hey, like, you know, what are some challenges you're having or what are a few things that you'd like us to, to film for you particularly? And he says one of the main things right now is boating. It seems like there's a ton of new boaters, a ton of, of people joining the boating clubs like Freedom Boat Club. He says, like, that's one of the number one things I am hearing. So guess what? We're going to be doing a ton. Doesn't mean that's all we're doing, but we are going to put an emphasis for a while 
on boating, on everything from the accessories for your boat, how to trailer your boat, the, the, right, uh, the right way to take care of your boat so it lasts longer, and ultimately how to catch more fish from your boat, whether it's yours or whether it is a Freedom Boat Club, etc. Uh, but that was really interesting. Yeah, and, um, and if you have any any topics in particular you want us to do, leave a comment whoa. down below. Oh, man, we'll, look at that. We'll add it to the oh, list. Pop off. This could be a perfect catch. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. This deserves a strike right here. Oh, that deserves a strike. Come on, baby. Man, can you guys yeah, hear yeah, this, this wind? It is cranka, cranka, cranking. We need some cranka crabs. <laughs> you ever catch anything with those cranka crabs, no. by the way? No? Cranka, sorry. We love we love Australia, but not the biggest fan of the cranka crabs yet. Yeah, so here's the wind we were talking about. And then we're still Ooh. we're still not getting the brunt of it. This is still hadn't had much much time to uh, to speed up. So, let's so see, if, let's see if we can find something on this lap. <laughs> so what are your thoughts about we're, able, we're we're now casting with the wind, but are we missing fish because it's the fish are positioned the other way? Uh, I mean, it's, if they're here, they're just going to be spread out, and so I mean, that's they're not going to be facing into the wind, just to be doing it. Like they're they're going to be this current's not moving, the wind's not pushing water that fast. They'll just, they'll be kind of sitting in whichever direction. Because doing underwater footage, I can see like I can see the trout what they're doing before they start moving. Yeah. And up on these flats, they're they're facing all different directions. Oh, oh, I just had a hit. So where? It's more about. Um, it's more about just you know the the angle of the pothole or, or whatever wherever the bait is relative to them. We could cast back there. We got stump over there. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and power pull down right here. Jack is blowing off here. This is That's just a crazy little bit gnarly. Man. Look at this little stump. It's super shallow back there, but I'm willing to bet that there's probably a snook or two. I'm gonna go ahead and move this bag and put it in the uh, in the live well to keep it out of out of harm's way. One of my favorite places to catch snook, skipping the little paddle tail underneath the mangroves. Look at all the mullet Ooh jumping. Wee, there's that wind. And everything besides this wind would make this a pretty good, pretty ideal little spot. I remember that stump when the water goes up. No doubt. That's like that one meme about uh, the 15 pounder that got off and it's really a stump with a bunch of <laughs> lures tied to it. Yeah. Everybody's catching. Let's go right over here and see what we got. Oh, look at that cat. That deserves one. Come on now. Where you be, Snook? It might be too windy for the Snook right now. Eh. It is just cranking. I might try one out there since you had a you said you had a strike. A couple more cast. And we'll have to call today. We got our uh, we got our inner uh, inner circle call. That's the call we're doing every Thursday with our insider members. We get on a live Zoom call and, ooh, and just talk about what's working, where to fish this coming weekend. Talk, we'll talk through stuff like this because normally by time you guys hear this, you know it's it's been a week, sometimes two or three, um, and so we always try to give our insiders that real time on demand. Quite the opposite of fishing magazines and fishing TV shows that are, you know, being filmed now for, you know, a year from now to, to air. Uh, we try to get at least our insider member stuff. Boom, bam, sham. Day, day it happens. Day after worst case. So we do these calls. They've been been fun. I've I missed the last couple because I've been in transit and all kinds of stuff. Just running a incredibly fast growing company. It has just been wild from the amount of new members and the amount of tackle and just trying to keep up with everything a lot of people don't know even on just these soft plastics you know they're all made out of plastisol uh, you know which is some petroleum based and most of that was coming from texas and texas had that freeze and our dad is a textile engineer and so that is what he did he actually uh, they had the, the the type of material that would repair furnaces, incinerators, and, and power plants. And all of these big manufacturing plants that make this stuff are essentially incinerators uh, and refractories. 
uh, oh, gone. And um, when that freeze happened, everything not only shut down, and when one of those plants or incinerator refractory plant gets shut down, that's bad news. But when things start cracking, which also happened because of the freeze, that's like the worst possible news. So they got to get people like my dad's old company in there to fix it. And then, I mean, wait for it to all, uh, what's it called? Not settle, but uh, whenever you have something that's heated up to whatever the word is. But I mean, they're saying this could be July by the time they even get the plants cranked up again. So the price of Plastisol skyrocketed like 40%. And normally like 5% increase would be mind blowing. And it's up like 40% just because of the supply and demand issues. So it has been absolutely nuts uh, out there. Sorry, dad, if you're listening, you're ashamed of me. I don't know what that word is. You know? <laughs> Kennel, furnace, I don't know. Healing, settling, it's something like that. Uh, but anyhow, it's, it's just been absolutely nuts and taking up a, a lot of our time just trying to figure out how we can always make sure we have stuff in. Because trust me, it, it kills us to have to hear from you guys, especially our members saying, hey, why don't you have this in? Or you guys are out of everything. I mean, trust me, <laughs> we would love to have everything in. We'd love for people to be buying stuff every single day. Uh, I don't think any company out there loves being out of stuff. Uh, so just know that it, you're frustrated. We're super frustrated. We have got so many pending orders out there. It's just not even funny. And it's just, it's been one of the most challenging times. It's exciting times because you got more people fishing than ever. You have more people who are wanting to buy tackle and wanting to upgrade their gear and to hit the water. That's all great, but it's also just been a complete nightmare to even plan for this. It used to, we used to plan like a month or two in advance. Now we're 18 months. We're literally having to plan out for July of 2022 for what we're buying and what we're investing in when it comes to, to tackle and, and new lures and even just the packaging, all the stuff that goes along with it. It has been really, really wild. So we're gonna keep doing more posts because what's interesting, we were looking online and no one seems to be really talking about this. Uh, I, our friends there at J&H up, up Northeast, they do a little bit, but Besides that, I mean, the manufacturers are just kind of silent. Like no one's giving real updates on what's happening. So stay tuned on, uh, on that. And uh, in the meantime, we're going to try to make the best of this last stretch. And uh, it's just getting crazy windy. Yes, the and, audio uh, we're is probably, probably gonna terrible. Head back in. At least we got our slam today. And uh, it's respectable for this uh, boat slam, not, not a personal slam. There is a difference. Uh, but at least uh, between Luke and I, we got, uh, got the slam plus a couple junk fish. And, uh, and at least made the best, even over a little hour or so of uh, hour and a half of fishing here today and pretty tough, tough weather. Um, and now of course we've got a cold front coming in. So that'll be interesting to see what that does. But anyhow, if you haven't joined us in the club, this is your chance to join us today. We're about 20, almost 22,000 members strong. We would love to have you in there. This works regardless if you're a wade fisherman, regardless if you're in a boat like this or a little skiff or a canoe, or a kayak, or a stand-up paddleboard. We would love to have you. Yeah, and if you, if you haven't yet picked up these Slam Shadies, make sure to do so, oh, give them a shot. Now. Come on. I mean, we, we do, we even offer a, a free a free pack for all the members, or for all, not members, really for all fishermen. Um, just one that we do lose money on it. You just have to pay a tiny shipping and handling. It's less than the cost of any lure you'll ever see. And, uh, and just because they work. You know, we're confident you're going to like them. And we know you're going to come back and buy more. Yeah, we know you're going to buy more, and then we, and we just hope that you're going to join the club as well. Um, and when you do get it, too, we send you a, a, a mini course on how to use it, how to rig it, you know, how to rig it for certain situations, right? Sometimes you want to go down deeper, sometimes shallower. You need to rig it properly, and, and, you, get, and you get all that stuff. So super, super important, to, and we'll put a link down below for that. Slamshady.com. We have yeah. our own URL for it. And the underwater footage of, this, of the fish hitting is just amazing. Um, so we'll make sure to link that as well. It's the underwater trout stuff. You can see exactly how they suck it down. It is really, really cool, and it can help with your hook sets um, just to know exactly Woo. exactly how they suck it down. So It is cranking. So you want to go ahead and end it? And, yeah, uh, let's end it. It is getting uh, windier and windier. Uh, so guys, thank you so much. We are going to call today ourselves and uh, just at least glad to get out here and at least get a few tight lines on artificial lures, proving once again that you don't have to have a perfect day. You don't have to have crazy live bait, although we do like live bait and I, we probably could have caught some great fish just sitting there 
uh, with some live bait, but you don't have to have it. It can be as simple as just taking a paddle tail lure on owner twist lock hook, same rods and reels you use for all the other stuff. And I'm gonna let that one go with the win. So we're out of here. Peace. Saltstrun.com to check out more. Join us in the club and leave us a comment as well. Uh, we put every one of these podcasts on the fishing tips section, and that's where we actually look at all the comments. So if you're watching this on YouTube or listening to it on iTunes, the best place to contact us or to give us feedback is saltstrun.com in the fishing tips section. Otherwise, I'm going to battle down the old hat and make sure nothing else flies off. Uh, crazy, man. Good times. Yeah, come on. See ya. Woo! And if you're new to Salt Strong, just know that we're the best fishing club in America because we actually guarantee that you'll catch more fish while saving money on all the tackle you need. We do this through premium education, our exclusive insider community, and huge discounts on the best tackle for saltwater anglers. To learn more, go to saltstrong.com. Otherwise, hope to see you again soon.